going to move on to another example with this same snare. Okay, so this is going to be using the same source, but I'm going to be using, and you see here I have 16 different hardware inserts that I'm using. Some are mono, some are stereo. So far we've just been using st uh, mono. So this is here. So this one I've changed to 12 to 1, and I've changed the attack and release time. So that even has more impact on that snare. You'll hear on this one, there's a lot of ghost notes on the, on the snare. So in between the big smacks, there's all this little da -da -da, all that kind of thing going on. And that's what I'm kind of trying to get with the 12 to 1 ratio. It's not working perfectly because those are the, the dynamic range between the two is like whack and then da -da -da -da. So what I would do uh, in addition to this is I would do fader rides. So I would, ha I would have this to start with, which is a great starting place. And then on every, uh, all those in-between ghost notes, which are just the smaller, you know, softer hits that the drummer is doing, which I think are, you know, sound amazing, but can get lost in a mix. I'm doing, I'm just going through a, a whole pass of just bringing up those with the faders. So I'm, you know, just, you know, just bringing up the ghost notes, bring up the ghost notes. And it seems mon monotonous, but, you know, hopefully you can get it like in one pass and it's just a, a couple of minutes and you got it. But getting all of that out is just like so much of the groove. And usually when I do that, adding the, the fader rides and then the drummer hears it, especially actually in, in this song, the drummer did come back and say, he was like, wow, he's like, usually no one gets those out. He's like, if only I hear it, I know it because I'm playing it. But uh, you know, it, that's awesome that you you know got that out in the mix. It didn't didn't get lost. But I mean, that's an important part of the groove. You know, that's that's part of the you know great feel. Yeah, in the back. Yes. Uh, the question is, is there a way to do it without the fader rides to get the ghost notes up to a proper level? Um, with just a piece of uh, like an, an effect, like a, like a piece of gear kind of thing. I don't, th I think it's better to do the fader ride. I think it's more musical, personally. And that's, I mean, for my mixing, I like to have something that's more musical in the end. You probably can <laughs> get that, you'd, you'd be smashing it, uh, you know, quite a bit to do that. So, yes, it's possible, but uh, yeah, I, I mean, I would prefer to do the fader rides. So let's go to uh, something else here. This is going to look at some of the EQs. Which is a tambourine, which is your a normal tambourine. And I want to make a lo-fi tambourine out of it. Something that's, you know, just something that someone might like. We'll try it. We'll go with just the tambourine first. Nope. Just tambourine. Okay. That's bypassed. I'm just put I'm just making it like a low fi sound. I'm just rolling off the high end. Sometimes you don't want the crisp and clear, you want something a little more funky and dirty, you know? So uh, I mean what I've found with these EQs is they sound great. I mean they they sound some of them sound like the real gear. Some of the real gear I haven't used in person. So it's great to actually have some of the ones that uh, that I've never used. But the ones that I have used, like the Lang EQ, I use all the time, the real gear. And I'll show you that in a little bit. That one sounds very, very close, if not better, than the real Lang. First of all, you can have you know multiple ones instead of one Lang costing you know three or 4,000 for one unit. And then you may have a unit that has noise. So uh, for the real piece of gear, and you, and the Antelope guys did an amazing job, you know, putting these together. So 
I, I'm already using them in mixing on my HD rig. All right, let's have some fun with some overheads. Now this is going to use uh, a DBX style. This is just without anything. Bypassed. Not bad, it's all right, you know. What I'm trying to get is a compact, you know, the kick and snare being the same level within the overheads. Bypass. And also I'm getting a fullness out of that. So for me, when I'm using overheads, room mics, uh, I like to get, first of all, I, re I recorded all this, so I'm already having that in mind when I recorded it, but uh, for positioning. But I want to get the full drum sound. Sometimes I'll just get it for like cymbals only, but most of the time I like to hear the full drums out of the overheads. Same with the the room mics. I want to hear, you know, I want to I want to hear the the kick, the the high end if if it's you know close enough to kind of get that from the cymbals. So then when I bring that up, it brings up the whole kit, not just oh I'm getting more cymbals now and now I have to you know figure out rearrange everything. So that's my approach on, on overheads and, and room mics. <laughs> 